So here's the TA question. This is the table that we have and this is all of the text that comes with it. Let's just read and try to make sense of this. In a recent study, each of 15 participants has been given exactly one of 15 printing devices. Okay, so there were 15 devices, 15 participants, one participant got one device. Okay, all 15 devices are intended to print a certain image, but each frequently malfunctions. So the devices, each of these frequently malfunctions and therefore fails to produce the intended image, which was the goal. Each participant has examined data about the past performance of his or her device. So we know one participant got one device and now we also know that the participants have put in some research. Every participant has examined how the particular device that they got has worked in the past. And based on this analysis, each participant has chosen a number of attempts that he or she believes will be the minimum needed to have a good chance of producing at least one correct image. What is this good chance? I don't know right now, but every participant has chosen a number. Let me really see this much here. I do see participants here 1 through 15 in the first column. I also see this number of attempts that was talked about. So participant 1 says that he needs, he or she needs um, 10 attempts at the very least to have a good chance of producing at least one correct image using the device that they have. Okay, So 10 is the minimum. Similarly, participant 6 feels, based on the device that they got, that they need at least 8 attempts to have a good chance of producing at least one correct image. So I see this multiple things here, good chance, at least one correct image, and minimum number of attempts. These are a lot of things that you're seeing. You need to understand the implication of every word here. Now, I still don't know the last bit. Let's read further. For each participant, the table shows, number of attempts that the participant will make and the actual probability of that participant's device producing a correct image on a single attempt. Okay, so this attempts is the actual that they will make. This is also the minimum that they found out and this is the number they had chosen, right? So they chose the number of attempts that they will make and it also shows, one more thing here, actual probability of that participant's device producing a correct image on any single attempt. Okay, what does this mean now? So if I look at the data for participant 1, then the probability is 0.2 that the machine that participant 1 has, that device that participant 1 has, it has a 0.2 probability of producing a correct image in one attempt. So that means I have, say, a 20% chance of producing a correct image in the first attempt using that device. So chances are obviously pretty low of getting it correct in the first attempt. That's why maybe this person chose 10 attempts to be safe, you know, to have a good chance. So Similarly, if you see, there's just a 10% chance of this machine, the device that participant 6 has, of producing a correct image in a single attempt. And based on the, the history of that machine, participant 6 feels that I would need 8 attempts at least. So this is the kind of values that we have on the table. And now also, it's not done. There's something more, a hypothesis. What is this? It says every participant has at least an 80% probability of producing the correct image within the number of attempts that he or she has chosen. That means if I'm talking about participant 1, then participant 1 has 80% chances of really producing this correct image that I was talking about within the 10 attempts that he has chosen to make or she has chosen to make, of course. So attempts I'm getting from here. These are all the attempts. Now remember talking about a good chance earlier. Maybe 80% probability this is the good chance, the 80%. So we feel things are fitting together now. So understand your hypothesis. Each participant, 80% probability producing the correct image. Now at this point, we understand everything. We don't know how all of this will be asked. We'll see when we go to the question. But we know every entry here in the table. That's clear. We know every column here. We know the hypothesis given. So now we'll see. We'll go to the question, come back here and then use the data as required. Okay. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So let's just go and read the question first. What does it say? This says, for each of the following participants, and I see three participants here, for each of these, select 
contradicts the hypothesis, which is you see the first column, if the data shown in the table for that participant considered alone, means you'll only think about that participant, contradicts the hypothesis. So essentially, if all of the data that we had in the table given for that particular participant, if that data contradicts the hypothesis about that 80% chance of producing the correct image, think about everything that you know, then you select contradicts the hypothesis. You select the first column, that particular entry. Otherwise, does not contradict the hypothesis, of course. So we really have to understand this properly. Take participant 6 only first, then let's think about this. So if I'm looking at participant 6, I want to see whether all of this data supports the hypothesis or all of this data contradicts the hypothesis. That's what I'm seeing. If this contradicts the hypothesis, column 1 I'll mark and I'll be done. So really think about this hypothesis again, but only for participant 6 this time. So how do we focus? Let's highlight this here and only and only read this data. So what is it again? Hypothesis says at least 80% probability of producing the correct image within the number of attempts. Participant 6 number of attempts are how many? You you can read them easily from the table to see the column and it's eight that I find. That means it's eight attempts I'm reading. I want to see is the probability of producing the correct image within these eight attempts only. Is this probability at least how much? 80%. So greater than equal to 0 0.8. Now, this is what I need to see. If this happens, if I get the answer to this as yes, then what will that mean? For me, if this is indeed greater, it is. it means it is supporting. No means it's not. So no is where I mark contradict the hypothesis and yes is where I mark does not contradict the hypothesis. So my criteria is very clear. How am I going to finally mark my choice? Let me try to find this now, this probability of having the correct image within these eight attempts. So see everything together. So I know the probability of getting a correct image in a single attempt is 0.1. That's what's given to me. So I am saying I get a correct image in these eight attempts. Now, at least one correct image I should get in these eight attempts, right? That means I am talking about probability at least, right? At least one correct and connect it with it in eight attempts. This way, what I've done is I have combined both of the two bits earlier that we had, the first bit about number of attempts and second about what probability I'm looking for. I've combined them together in this single situation. These two numbers, look. So single go this way. Now only and only focus on this. This probability I have to then see, is it greater than 0 0.8, greater than equal to or no? So more refined statement that I now have to work with. Now, how will I find this probability? Think about it. At least one correct, there can be so much happening. One correct, two correct, three correct, up till all eight correct. That's just so many possibilities to think about. Much better than that is to think about the non-attempt, which is one minus probability, none correct. This then changes my question into, is this greater than or equal to point eight? Which now further goes into, is probability of none correct, I'm just rearranging to get my numbers together, is this less than equal to 0.2. So essentially, I will have a clear question once I find out probability of none correct. And I will have to do that using this data here. Think about it now. If I have probability of any single attempt being correct as 0.9, then probability none correct means first wrong, second wrong, all the way till the eighth one wrong, which means I am finding the probability of not getting the correct thing, which is the reverse of this 1 minus 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, eight times. This is the probability of none giving me the correct image. So here I come back and it becomes is 0 0.9 to the power eight less than equal to 0 0.2. Now, finally, I have a question which is purely numbers and I just want to compare this. Now, at this stage, I want to tell you that there are two ways in which you can do this. One is you can estimate the value of 0.9 to the power 8. I'm going to show this to you. Second is you can simply go on the calculator and then find this value. I'll show both of these to you one by one. If you like estimation, do that. If you're not comfortable with that, go to the calculator. Similarly, if the calculator seems too crazy for something like this, then you use estimation. So let's think about the estimation bit first. I'll organize the screen a little. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the table analysis modules in the GITA course, we teach you how to get comfortable with the table so that you can process it in the most efficient way.
we serve more than 65 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you learn various aspects of the table analysis questions, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. All right, here we are. And on this side, we'll only and only think about how estimation will help us do this comparison. So I'm going to estimate 0 0.9 to the power 8. So look at it, 0 0.9 to the power 8, I can write it as 9 by 10 to the power 8. Now I can think of this as 3 squared to the power 8. And of course, 10 to the power 8 stays. This is 3 to the power 4 to the power 4, because that's 16. Now, why did I do this? Because generally, this is a power that people know of that 3 to the power 4 is 81. That at least helps me do some calculations here. Now, 81 is very close to 80. Why I'm doing that is so that I can cancel out some of the zeros in the denominator. How I'll be able to do that is by simply separating the 80 into 8 times 10. This way then I can cancel this out to 10 to the power 4. Now I have 8 to the power 4 by 10 to the power 4. More manageable than we started. Now 8 to the power 4 is what? 8 squared times 8 squared and, and I know that as well. So it's 10,000 in the denominator. Remember the goal is simply to compare it with 0.2. So you don't have to be very exact. So for example, this thing here, if I had 60 times 60, then it would be 3600. I, I know this is way less. My actual answer will be more than this. But 3600 3, over 10,000, which is going to be 0.36. That means means my actual answer, which is more than 0.36, can I now say that it is less than 0.2? Of course not. 0.36 and more than that is obviously going to be greater than 0.2. So I get a no to this answer, to this question that we were trying to answer. And I already knew what I would do if I get a no. We knew that if we get no, we will mark contradict in the choices. So coming here, participant 6, we mark contradicts the hypothesis. We are done. Now, let me also show you the calculation method of figuring this out. How is it that you will calculate 0.9 to the power 8? There. So let's bring that. Okay, so I've just opened a random question on EG Math Scholarinium platform to show you how the calculator will be used. So I wanted 0.9 to the power 8. So what you can do is you can put 0.9 here, then multiply that with 0.9 again. So you'll again do 0.9 and then keep doing that for an 8 total attempts. And then as you keep doing that, it is going to keep growing. For example, I've done it 3 times. Now I do it 4th time and the same thing. You can keep finding individual values or just keep doing it. Another thing you can do is you can simply not put the point uh, 9, you can simply put 9 to the power 8. And that means you multiply 9, 9, 9, 8 times. Be very careful as you're counting this. For example, I've done it four times till now. And this is what I have. Another thing you can do is use some knowledge that you have. For example, you know, 9 squared is 81. So 9 to the power 8 will be 81 to the power 4. At least you will now have to multiply something four times. So I'm doing 81 times 81, two times I'm done. This is the third time. And now this is the fourth time. See how quicker this was compared to what we were doing earlier. Now we have to divide this by 10 to the power 8. So you simply move this decimal place 4 places to the 8 places to the left and it is going to get you to 0 0.43 right at the beginning. And if it is 0 0.43, obviously it is still greater than 0.2. So your answer does not change. So I essentially showed you three ways of doing this. One, really put in 0.9 into 0.9 into 0.9, this eight times, which was more challenging compared to what I did next. Next I did just find nine to the power eight, nine times nine, this eight times, and then make sure to divide it by 10 to the power eight. And then the third thing that we did was to use some of the values that you already know, like nine squared, you know, is 81. So 81 to the power four was a lot faster to put on the calculator because you just had to put something four times. So see how I did use the calculator in all three ways, but how the last one is way more efficient than the first two. So this is a very good question to show you how you can use the calculator efficiently. You're using it in all ways, but still there is a difference in what you're doing in each case. These have scope of error because you're doing something eight times. This is safer because of not using the calculator so, so many times. Okay. So both of these methods obviously give you the same answer and this completes our first choice. Now, similarly, if you continue, you think about participant seven nothing changes really. So I can simply copy all of this thing that I had for participant six and I'll just use this again for seven. Let's see. All right, here you go. 
Now I'll simply change everything here for participant 7. So you find the number of attempts for participant 7. Come here in the table. This is 7. Number of attempts is okay, just 2 this time. So it's a 2 here and then I had it here. At least 1 correct in all of the attempts, which is 2 attempts this time. Again, approach is still the same. 1 minus none correct. But this time none correct is the probability, which will be different obviously. So I'll come here and find the probability of none correct. If being correct in a single attempt is 0 0.5, then even being wrong is 0 0.5. Now, since I want it to be none correct in a total of two attempts, then that means first wrong and second wrong. So, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So, no need to put anything in the calculator this time. Estimation, calculation, nothing needed. Very straightforward. So, is 0 0.25 less than equal to 0 0.2? No. Which means my answer is contradicts the hypothesis. So, this was way faster because of no calculations. I'm done. Finally, then we will repeat the process for participant 9. Let me show you how I'm editing this this time because you're repeating the same analysis. So just change number of attempts and then this will change as well. Focus on participant 9. So yes, participant 9, where is the row? This is the row, number of attempts 3. Hmm. So let's replace now. It's the 3 which I will use here and here again. Okay. Then again, I need to find probability none correct. So first find it not being correct on a single attempt, just 1 minus 0 0.26 or 0 0.74. Now you want to be wrong on 3 attempts. Wrong and wrong and wrong. So just simply multiply the, multiply the probabilities. You can estimate this because values are smaller. I can also really do it uh, on the calculator. I can take it 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7 because I'm estimating. So 49 and then times another 7. That's a simple calculation that you can do. So overall, when you do all of this work, you will get 0 0.343. Then your goal was just to compare this with 0 0.2, right? That's all you had to do. Is 0 0.343 less than equal to 0 0.2? No, answer is still the same. Contradicts even now. So you come here, you mark for the answer here. My answer for all three is the same. I am done. Let's summarize this question nicely. So first, there was a lot of text given about what the situation is. So many participants, so many devices. Then they were doing some examination. They were seeing, okay, past performance, choosing number of attempts. There was a lot going on. So it was very important that you own the data set. You really understand how this table is created. What are the values that it shows you? Then it topped it with a hypothesis, which was fancy here. Hard to understand in the first go. Now then, we had these participants, we had to evaluate whether the hypothesis was satisfied for them or not. And for each participant, we did exactly the same work. So I'll just summarize it using participant 9. We began by carefully translating what is it that the question wants us to do? When is it that we'll mark no? When is it that we will mark yes? We wanted to see whether in the total attempts, the chances of having at least one correct image is greater than or equal to 0.8. So we combined both of these pieces, first of all, to write it in a single probability statement like this. Then it was simply how to find probability, which is just conceptual knowledge, nothing difficult at all. So you just had to go into the table to find out first the non-event for a single attempt, then use that to find out the probability of all being wrong that means probability of none correct, which then helped us find the final answer really quickly. Participant 6, that analysis was especially interesting because the calculation was not straightforward. We saw two methods for that. Estimation was one. Another, we saw how you could do this directly on the calculator. So see how your approach changed from participant to participant, despite the question wanting exactly the same thing. That's how values and data will decide what to do. You have to determine your approach before you just jump into data and get lost in all of the numbers, okay?